St Helen's Or. My name's Lynn Clayton. I'm one of the church wardens at St Helen's and St Barnabas churches in Or Hastings. Today's service focuses on Jesus, the Good Shepherd, one of three I Am sayings of Jesus, which we'll explore over the coming weeks. In the light of this, our first song is based on Psalm 23. <laughs> shepherd I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul, and I will trust in you. And I will trust in you alone For your endless mercy follows me Your goodness will lead me home He guides my ways in righteousness And he anoints my head with oil And my cup I feast on his pure delight, and I will trust in you alone, and I will trust in you alone, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will lead me home, and though I walk the darkest path. I will not fear the evil one, for you are with me and your rod and staff are comfort I need to know, and I will trust in you follows me, your goodness will lead me home. And now some words of hope from 1 Peter chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Through Jesus we have confidence in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. We are conscious that we do not always live our lives as Jesus would. Knowing that he's promised to forgive us, we say, Father, we've sinned against you, and are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. 
Bring us back to yourself that we might live as those who have new life in Jesus. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Roger and Christine Pook are long-standing members of St Helens. A church visit to Romania signalled a dramatic change of direction in their lives. Roger will talk about that in a moment, but first Roger will read today's reading from John chapter 10, followed by his talk. Today's reading is from John's Gospel chapter 10. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, leads his sheep to abundant life. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. There was again a division among the Jews because of these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello everyone. I'm Roger Pook and I want to tell you how Christine and I became St Helen's missionaries to Eastern Europe and what this means for the church and for us today. I don't want this to sound like it's all about us, but rather that it's all about how God calls and uses the most ordinary of people for his own glory. If you've been part of this church fellowship for quite some time, then cast your mind back to October 1991. This was the time when a group from St Helens and St Barnabas collected three van loads of humanitarian aid for Romania, and then drove them to a Baptist church in the town of Baia Mare. 
Those of us who took part in this convoy probably thought that this would be our one big adventure, after which we could go back to our normal everyday life. But for some of us, God definitely had other ideas. In the years that followed, smaller groups from St Helens returned to Romania many times. Amongst other things, we helped the, Bi the Baptist Church in Bayamare to set up a Christian family centre to help with the problem of crisis pregnancy. Many young lives were saved from being aborted as the Romanian church gave love and practical help to these desperate mothers. Our own contribution was to train the church in prayer ministry in the way that we ourselves had been taught by LL Ministries at Glindley Manor. This prayer ministry helped these mothers to find real inner peace and also healing from the traumas of social rejection and the deprivations of the recent communist regime. It gave them hope and strength to live a fulfilling life with their new family. Then in autumn 1994, things took a dramatic and life-changing turn. In unexpected but unmistakable ways, God made it very clear to Christine and myself that we were to give up everything in the UK and work with LL Ministries at their new base in Hungary. We talked this through with our leadership at St Helens and they recognised the call. The church lovingly undertook to support us in prayer and also financially as St Helens Missionaries to Eastern Europe. We spent all of 1995 in preparation and on 7th January 1996 we set off to Hungary with just our car and caravan and two days later we joined the LL Ministries team in Hungary. Just a word about LL Ministries in case you don't know. This work started in 1986 in the village of LL just south of Lancaster. You can find the whole history of the ministry on the website ll.org, that's E-L-L-E-L. -L -E -L. The founding scripture for this ministry is Luke 9:11, where we read that Jesus welcomed the people, spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed healing. So our aim in LL Ministries is to welcome, teach and heal in the way that the Bible teaches. As disciples of Jesus, we want to follow his clear command in Matthew 10, 7 and 8 to proclaim the kingdom of God, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers and drive out demons and give all this just as freely as we have received it ourselves. <clears throat> However, Christine and I arrived in Hungary to find ourselves right in the middle of a financial crisis. There was no money to pay the local Hungarian team members or to complete the centre building and the local team was reduced to just a handful of people. But then we heard a clear word from God, use what you've got. So instead of welcoming people from countries across the former communist world to our centre in Hungary, we had to go out to them, taking the teaching and the prayer ministry with us. And as a result of this, over the last 25 years, we too and the team have taken prayer ministry, conferences and training courses to churches throughout Central and Eastern Europe. We've worked right across the Russian Federation, as far as Vladivostok in the Far East, which is further east than China, in fact. Uh, in some of these places, we are definitely under the radar or, to put it another way, not exactly legal but we've always felt complete peace knowing that people are praying for us. Thank you so much for this, St Helens and St Barnabas family. We've seen the inside of three or four Russian police stations. We've even been called in for interview by the Russian FSB security police, but we've always felt surrounded by God's total peace. And then of course, there are all our travel adventures by road, rail and air, which really could fill a book. But now, let's get back to today's Bible reading for a moment. In this reading from John chapter 10, Jesus, the Good Shepherd, 
says that he has other sheep who are not of this sheep pen. We understand this to mean that he's not just the saviour of the Jews, but of all those who accept and obey him as saviour and Lord. He says, they too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. One of the greatest privileges of our own calling has been to meet fellow sheep in this one flock, so far in 24 different countries. Everywhere we go, we're greeted like long lost family members. It does of course help that I've been blessed with the ability to speak a number of the local languages. And what a wonderful blessing that is. And Christine is loved like a sister or a mother as she proclaims God's love and acceptance through translation. And we found out something else too. All Christians are alike. Not maybe externally, but there is something in them that is instantly recognisable. A family resemblance. There's a spirit to spirit connection. In all of these countries, our aim has always been the same. To show from the Bible how churches everywhere can fulfil the command of Jesus and bring real healing in spirit, soul and body. As a ministry, we only ever go where we're invited by local churches because we believe that the best place for healing is within a local church fellowship, under the covering and authority of the leadership of that church. That's why in normal times, prayer ministry is offered in St Helens after every service for all who need it. So, as we have answered these invitations from churches, we have taught, preached and prayed for healing with groups ranging from individuals to many hundreds of people. Through God's grace, we have seen real miraculous healing of sick and broken bodies, suffering souls and crushed spirits. And this happens so often, it's not surprising anymore, just joyful. And in all of this, God is glorified and it's been so good to be supported in this by St Helens and our family here. In March of this year, we just got back from a week of ministering in Hungary, right before the travel restrictions intensified. Well, thank you, God. But sadly, our next visit to Romania in May has been cancelled. We should have been ministering in Bucharest and Cluj Napoca. But the good news is this. The teams that we've trained across Eastern Europe are well able to continue the work without us. We're not indispensable. And maybe God has something new for us here. Back once again to today's reading. Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, I, have, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Christine and I can testify that when you do what our shepherd tells you and come in and go out through his gate for the sheep, then he really does give an abundant life that is beyond anything you could have imagined. We too have seen miracles without number in parts of the world that many people never get to visit. We were both over 50 when we answered God's call. And in these last 25 years, they've been the fullest life anyone could imagine. Not the easiest, but definitely the most abundant. And it's not over yet. So once again, big thank you to our church family. And the wonderful thing is that as long as you draw breath, you can live this abundant life, even in these dark and difficult times, and even just in your own home. And there are people in this church family who can help you with this, so why not try it? Pray with me now. Father, I'm sorry that I ever thought that I was too old, too unsure, or just too ordinary to take hold of the abundant life that you have prepared for me. Please forgive me. I choose now to believe the words of Jesus, that he came so that I can have abundant life. Please break through my doubts, speak to my heart, and show me what you really want me to do. And I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So goodbye and 
God bless you all. Our next worship song is a response to the saving work of the Good Shepherd. Thank you for saving me, can I say? You are my everything, I will sing your praise. You shed your blood for me, what can I say? took my sin and shame, the sinner called my intercessions. The response to each prayer is, Good Shepherd, hear us, graciously hear us. For all communities who are affected by COVID-19 as they respond to the many and various needs of each individual and family, give wisdom to all leaders internationally, nationally and locally as they make crucial decisions for the good of all in their care. Good Shepherd, hear us, graciously hear us. For all who serve as carers, health workers, hospital staff, the police, teachers, food retailers and so many others who are giving their time and expertise, often at great cost to themselves, that they may be kept safe and have the energy to do all that is required of them. Good Shepherd, hear us graciously hear us. For scientists, lab technicians and all those working to provide tests and vaccines to protect us from future infection, 
that they may have all the resources they need to do their work well and provide what is needed. Good Shepherd, hear us, graciously hear us. For communities in developing countries who are facing the same issues as we are, yet without the same resources, and who in addition face extreme poverty, lack of food and water, freedom and a secure future, that the present crisis will not blind us to their needs or stifle means of support. Good Shepherd, hear us, graciously hear us. For those who live in fear or who face illness, bereavement, loneliness or domestic abuse, that they will find someone to talk to and who can offer support and help just where it's needed. Good Shepherd, hear us, graciously hear us. For ourselves, that we might grow in faith and trust as we use this time to study your word, pray and walk more closely to you, our Good Shepherd, Saviour and Lord. Good Shepherd, hear us, graciously hear us. The Collect for today. Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command, that all your people may be gathered into one flock, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Let us sing together our final worship song. When all around is fading And nothing seems to last And each day is filled with sorrow Still I know with all my heart He's got the whole world in his hands He's got the whole world in his hands I fear no evil, for you are with me, strong to deliver, mighty to save. He's got the whole world in his hands. And when I walk through fire, I will not be burned. When the waves come crashing round me, still I know with all my heart, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. And I fear no evil, for you are with me, strong to deliver, almighty to save. the whole world in his hands he's got 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 the whole world in his hands, world in his hands. and i've been all evil for you are with me, strong to deliver, almighty to save. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. 
got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. And now, a final blessing. May Jesus, the Good Shepherd, lead us, heal us and comfort us as we walk with him. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. We look forward to seeing you next week. Keep safe. It's not